<laughs> the graphic says the doctor is in, so we'd better introduce the doctor. <laughs> Joan J. Stock, big hit after claims that it was aware of asbestos in its baby powder. Now, the company insists it is absolutely safe to use. Mm. I'm going to quote their statement. Johnson Johnson's baby powder is safe and asbestos free. Thousands of independent tests by regulators and the world's leading labs prove our baby powder has never contained asbestos. That's pretty strong stuff. Direct. Doc Siegel is with us now. Who do you believe? Well, I'm not a lawyer, but I'll tell you this. They got problems. It's only 0.5% of their product. But there's very good evidence from this Reuters study that they, that they did know something in the 1970s and on into the 1980s. And some research showed some contamination that was going on in the talc mines. There's a lot of asbestos in that, those talc mines. And you know what the problem is, Stuart? Over many, many years, even small amounts, if you use, the, use it daily, can accumulate, cause a mesothe mesothelioma, which is a lung cancer, okay. or uterine or ovarian cancer, from constant exposure. I think it's rarely a problem. I think it's probably not a problem now. I think we're talking 70s and 80s primarily, <coughs> but the consumer confidence problem is real. Yes, because that's Because J and Day looked the like they were, yes. they were f focusing on only the positive results. But would you, I mean, you've got patients, they come to you, would you say, do not use J and J baby powder? I wouldn't say that. Wouldn't but I wouldn't say that, but I would say judicious use. Be aware of this issue. Be aware this went on. Be aware of, of tiny bits of contamination. I asked the makeup artist out there, you think there's talc in this makeup that you and I put on every day? I mean, we have to be aware of the issue, of the issues. But the, the, it was a very strong response from J&J. &J. Thousands of studies have found no asbestos in our baby powder. I mean, that's pretty, that's straightforward, isn't it? I hate to it? go against them here on national television, but I looked at, through all of this very carefully, and it looks but, like there was some contamination in some of these studies that were done. That okay. there, because, again, the miners, and the miners who were in these mines getting talc, some of them got sick. Some of them ended up with lung problems. Some of them ended up with lung cancer. Is, is talc and powder mined? Yes, know. talc. Yes, talc. talc. The powder is mines. in mines. Yes. This is a chemistry lesson today. The talc <laughs> is found in mines. Yes. yes, it's a naturally occurring substance, yes. like iron. And, uh, really, and, and it can be contaminated by asbestos. Again, overall, no. Trace amounts. But trace amounts is not even a, 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 is not even a term we physicians like. Trace amounts, we like zero. It's not always zero. Okay. Uh, this one before you go. More teens are vaping to, uh, nic nicotine, vaping uh, tobacco, um, but their binge drinking and opioid use is down. So using e-cigarettes to get nicotine into your system, that's up, but drinking alcohol, binge drinking, and opioid, that's down. Is that good news? Well, the, part of it's good news. We're doing a good job on the opioid epidemic, finally. We're cutting down on prescriptions, which means That's less good. in medicine cabinets, less for people that aren't supposed to be getting these drugs to taking them. To, less alcohol is always great news. That's a real poison, alcohol. That's underreported. We've been underreporting the effects of alcohol on teens. Mm -hmm. Vaping, according to FDA, is a huge epidemic, Stuart. Yes. The use has doubled over the past year in high schoolers. 20% of high schoolers are now vaping. 1.3 million more people vaping e-cigarettes now than a year ago. Now, as a physician, I'm not that worried about vaping, except nicotine can affect the brain. I'm more worried about how the nicotine in e-cigarettes leads to tobacco use at three to four times the rate than if you didn't use e-cigarettes. That's the okay. problem, that our high schoolers okay. start with e-cigs and then go to tobacco. But from a purely phys physician's uh, position, it's better that they're vaping than smoking, and it's very good that they're drinking less and less opioid use. All good news. I just That's wish right. that, that it wasn't a gateway drug. I wish that for... Listen, I use e-cigarettes... Well, listen, I use e-cigarettes to get smokers off of cigarettes, so I okay. love e-cigarettes. Yep. But I, it's, it's really illegal for, for kids under the age of 18 to be buying it in stores. I like that FDA is clamping down on that. I'm not a big regulation guy, but all those flavors, bubble gum, menthol, yes. you know, look, a lot of those flavors are the same as tobacco flavors. I don't like people. I'd rather that people use nothing. They, yeah. they, they get high on life, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doc. <Got> it. <laughs>